I will start the fourth lecture of week 6 of this course. In this lecture, we will look at the Hermann Morgan notation for the space groups and uh, this will, will actually conclude our discussion on the, on the notations and also conclude our discussion on symmetries. So, week 6 lecture 4 Hermann Morgan notation for space groups. So, uh, some general rules in writing the Hermann Morgan notation. Uh, you can use the short form of the Hermann Morgan notation. There are also cases where the long form is used, but we will stick to the short form and we will indicate the nature of the lattice okay, that can be primitive or centered. It can be P, F, I, C, R. There is also a possibility of having an A center that we will see okay, in some special cases. R is only for the uh, R centered uh, hexagonal lattice. Then, so, so use the short form and indicate the nature of the lattice. Then you add the information about glide planes and screw axis. Okay. And uh, when you do this, so we so will actually look at each position, the first, second and third positions of the Hermann Morgan symbol. And we will see whether there is a, whether there are glide, pl glide planes or screw axis on these positions. And then, and then again, again we will use the, yeah, we will use the same position with, with an additional extra position that is the, that indicates this symmetry. Okay. So, so I will just, I will just give one example. Okay. So, you can have something like P 6 3 M C. Okay, so you can see that the first position is uh, is this is an example. Okay. Okay, so 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 we can see that uh, here the P indicates primitive. Okay, the six three indicates that there is a six three screw axis at the first position, then a mirror at the second, and a C glide at the third position. Okay, and again as uh, as always, we'll use the most most concise notation. We look, you have to look for the most concise notation. Okay. And uh, these are also called international symbols and uh, you can all, and the space groups are also numbered 1 to 230. So, so the space groups, you have 230 space groups for all crystals and these are numbered 1 to 230. And so, I would not be discussing all the 230 groups, okay. uh, but, but I will try to give you a, a feel for some of these numbers. Okay, so that so that when you see them in uh, while reading uh, other books or, or or reading about different crystals, then you are not completely unaware. Okay, let's now look at the space group symbols. Now, in the case of the triclinic system, okay, there is only one space group possible. Okay, the, in the or or in the in the case of the PDL system, there is only one space group, and that is just denoted as one. The pinacoidal is just a one with an inversion okay and uh, this this last digit here is actually the number okay so this is the this is the number of space group okay some crystal that is that is uh, whose space group is numbered 1, then it corresponds to the triclinic PDL. The nomenclature, nomenclature is P1. So, this is the Hermann Morgan symbol, this is the space group number. So, so P1 and P1 bar are Hermann Morgan symbols. Okay, let me use a different color to indicate that. So, these are the Hermann Morgan symbols. Morgan symbols. Okay. So um, then the then you go to then you go to the others like uh, in the case of monoclinic uh, the sphenoidal case. Now uh, in the sphenoidal crystal class there are actually three different space groups that are possible. Okay, you can have a P two primitive two that only has the two 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 fold axis. Now you can have a P two one where the two fold axis is actually a screw, a screw axis of rotation. Then you could have a C 2, okay. C is a C centered okay. and uh, you do not have a primitive, but you have a C centered 2. 
and these are numbered 3, 4, 5. Then you can have the monoclinic domatic okay, where you have to have a mirror. Now uh, you that so you could have uh, in the in you could have primitive with a mirror, primitive with a C glide plane or a C center with a mirror, C center with a glide plane. Okay, and these are denoted, uh, these are given the numbers 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, if you have the 2 by m, the prismatic crystal class, now you have, uh, you have a total of 6 space groups. You can have a P 2 by m, just a primitive 2 by m, P 2, 2 underscript 1, that is a screw axis okay, and a perpendicular mirror. You can have a C center and a 2 by m. Uh, P center and a 2 where the mirror is actually a C glide, P center and a screw axis and the mirror is a C glide, a C center with a 2 axis and a C glide. glide. Okay. Now, notice that not all the combinations are there, okay. there are certain restrictions, okay. there are certain restrictions on which is uh, allowed for which one. For, for example, you do not have a C center with uh, where the 2 axis is a 2 is a, is a screw is a screw axis. Okay, and uh, that that is indeed the case, and uh, you know these are not you cannot have uh, arbitrary uh, symmetry operations. These have to satisfy the lattice condition. Uh, you can now the orthorhombic where you have the two cross two rhombic disphenoidal class. Okay, so one I'll just give one example. Actually, there are there are a total of nine different uh, space groups. Okay space group number 16 to 24 fall in this okay i'll just give one example this is the this is a i means it has a body body centered so i i'll just make a few points here so so p means primitive f means face centered so this is for the first first alphabet of the of the space group i is body centered okay and uh, addition c is c c face centered and then a similarly a a a is a face centered And you can also have, we will also see that you can have an R which is an R centered. Okay, so, these are the possible numbers that you can have. In this case, I means a body centered 2 1. So, the 2 axis uh, that you have that you are supposed to have for to be orthorhombic, so each of them is a is a 2 1 screw axis. Okay. Now, the rhombic pyramidal class that is M M 2. Okay. Now, an example of this is P n a 2 1. Okay. So, what this means is that the first position mirror is actually an uh, diagonal glide. Okay. So, that, 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 that mirror is a diagonal glide reflection uh, symmetry. The second mirror is an a glide and the 2, the 2 fold axis of rotation is a screw axis 2 1 screw axis. Okay. And uh, this orthorhombic MM2, this is just one example, okay. but uh, in this rhombic dipyramidal crystal class, there are actually, there are, uh, there are 22 different uh, space groups in this. So, so, from numbers 25 to 46 are in this space group. Then you can have the rhombic dipyramidal, where you have the MMM. Okay, an example of this is a face centered DDD where each of the mirrors is a diamond glide okay. and uh, this, uh, this is one example. Okay. There are uh, you know there are several different space groups in this uh, and the total number of space groups here okay, takes it from goes all the way from 47 to 74. So, there are a total of 28 space groups in the rhombic dipyramidal crystal class. Okay. And, uh, for the orthorhombic system, you can have primitive, you can have face centered, you can have uh, body centered, you can have C centered or A centered. Now, uh, again, again the C and A, okay, these 
these uh, have to be looked at with respect to the position. So, the first position okay, is usually reserved for the C, C axis okay. and uh, so, so you, it turns out you can have both C and A center. Okay. What about the tetragonal? Now, the tetragonal dipyramidal where the crystal class is just denoted by 4. Okay. In this case, uh, you can have a total of 6 space groups. So, they range from numbers 75 to 80. One example is P43. So, it is primitive and the 4 fold axis is actually a 4 3 screw axis. Okay. Then you can have 4 bar. Uh, here, there are only 2, two different space groups 81 and 82. So, one example is I 4 bar. So, you can just have the 4 bar without anything and you can have the 4 bar with a bob with a inversion center. The 4 by m that is a tetragonal dipyramidal. In this case, there are uh, there are a total of 6 space groups. Okay. One example is a P42 by n. So, the so here the 4 fold axis is actually a 4 2 screw axis. The mirror is a diagonal glide. Okay. Then there are if you take the 4 2 2 this is a tetragonal trapezohedral crystal class and now uh, there are 10 10 uh, space groups okay in this in this crystal class uh, here's an example where you have a 4 on subscript 3 2 subscript 1 and 2 then you can have a 4 mm which is a ditetragonal pyramidal in this case you have uh, you have i uh, you have a total of 12 12 space groups they go from 99 to 110. One example is a I4 subscript 1 CD. So, the first position the 4 fold axis here is, is a 4 1 screw axis and uh, the second mirror is a C glide and the third mirror is a, di is a, is a diamond glide. Okay. So, and, and this is this has a center of inversion. So, so it is so the first letter is I. Then the tetrag tetragonal scalenohedral. Okay. Now here, he, here, here again you have uh, you have 12, 12 different uh, space groups. Okay. And uh, this is characterized by 4 bar 2 m. An example is shown here. Uh, notice that this particular example, the where I had a 2, okay, I have an m, and where I have an m, I have a 2. Okay, this is very special. Okay, it doesn't happen too often. Okay, so the twofold axis is actually replaced by a mirror, and the mirror is replaced by a twofold axis. So, so there is some. Uh, I mean, th this is extremely special. I mean, you very rarely find this inter interchange between two and m. Okay, but in this case, it does happen. And again, again, that has to do with this, with this, uh, with these locations. So you have a m and a two m's the second position and the third position they are they are i mean the the idea is to have a consistent notation so that you can from this name you can work out what what are the symmetries of the crystal okay so so therefore the second position and the third position are perfectly defined okay the first second and third positions all these positions are well defined now uh, this is another um, another class uh, okay so you have a 4 by m m m okay uh, so this is a ditetragonal dipyramidal okay an example is uh, i41 by a c d okay so the first mirror that is perpendicular to the four fold axis is now an a glide and then the second and third mirrors are a c glide and a diagonal glide okay and 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 this has fairly large number nearly, nearly 20 20 space groups in this. So, so the tetragonal class is involves uh, you know it goes all the way from 75 to 142. Okay, so, there are quite a large number of uh, uh, space groups that are in the tetragonal class. Uh, in the tetragonal class only primitive or body centered are allowed. So, it can only be either primitive or body centered you cannot have a face centered tetragonal or a, or a C centered tetragonal. Next, uh, we'll go to the trigonal hexagonal. Okay, and uh, here, here we have the twelve classes, the twelve uh, uh, space groups. These are the 12, 12 point groups. These are the short forms. Okay, I'll just give a few examples. Okay, so the 
now the trigonal goes all the way from 143 to 167 okay and here every group is either primitive or r centered okay an example is uh, r 3 bar m okay so the trigonal basically goes in this this set okay the hexagonal in this case every group is uh, every group has to be primitive okay an example is p 6 3 by m c m okay so so that would fall in this uh, in this in this crystal class and that crystal class is dihexagonal dipyramidal okay so and this goes for all the way from 168 to 194 okay so uh, so so the trigonal hexagonal and the and the tetragonal uh, crystal systems okay they have a fairly large number of space groups finally we go to the cubic cubic crystal class okay now uh, here here the here uh, you have the five uh, you have the five different classes okay there is a, there's a tetroidal okay and this uh, the space groups for tetroidal go from 195 to 199 so there are only five of them the diploidal has goes from 200 to 206 okay in the tetroidal okay no notice you have a 2 and a 3 okay uh, what is important for the cubic crystal system is that uh, is that the second position has to be 3 or 3 bar okay so this is a condition for the cubic system so the second position has to be either 3 or 3 bar okay the the first position okay is uh, is is uh, usually a, uh, some sort of higher uh, i mean it can be a higher order axis it can be a mirror or it can be a even a low, lower order axis okay so the tetroidal and diploidal okay in that in that the first position is is actually a two fold axis and a mirror uh, these are examples of these two classes examples of uh, space groups in these two class classes the gyroidal has a 4 3 2 okay so uh, one example of a, of a space group in this class is uh, is i 4 bar 1 3 2 okay so you have a four fold roto inversion it's a it's actually a 4 1 roto inversion screw axis then there is a 3 which is the middle number and then and then you have a 2 uh, at the end so you have a two fold axis also and uh, actually actually this whole cl class of gyroidal goes from uh, 207 to 214 the hexa tetrahedral which is uh, 4 bar 3m again uh, uh, there are many many space groups there are a total of 6 space groups for this okay and uh, they one example is shown here f4 bar 3c so the mirror is actually replaced by a uh, is a is a glide reflection then the hex octahedral which we saw in the short form as m3 bar m okay example of this is f d3 m okay yeah, so uh, this goes from 221 to 230 it should be a d3 bar m okay so um, this goes from 2, 221 to 230 so there are 10 groups in this okay so so the the cubic system cubic groups can be either p i or f okay uh, so uh, but what is important is that second position has to be 3 or 3 bar okay now uh, before i conclude this lecture I want to tell you that uh, you know identifying space groups is not very easy and uh, there is a there is a very nice resource for uh, for space groups okay uh, and and lot of properties of crystals okay this is the international tables of for crystallography okay this is the website the website for that is shown here okay so this is the website for this international table of crystallography you can actually buy this okay you cannot it is not a free download but you can you can uh, buy these international tables for crystallography and these are usually available in most uh, 
most uh, colleges and institutional libraries. Okay. And, uh, and what is important is that they keep updating some of these. So, so, so as more, so uh, in fact, in fact, uh, so, so, so there is space group symmetry, there is symmetry relations between space groups, there is reciprocal space which we will come and then there is, there are other tables and lot of things. Okay. But the, but the space group symmetry contains all the, all the information about E, about all the different space groups. Okay. In addition to this, there are also some online resources, okay, which also, which also uh, give lot of these uh, information about space groups. Okay. So, so I will, uh, I will conclude uh, this lecture here and I will, in this, uh, in the next lecture, we will summarize what we learnt in week 6 and uh, do some practice problems. But uh, I want to make a few points. Okay. Uh, see, there are 230 space groups it is not possible that you will remember all of them. Okay. But I would expect you to have some idea about the different uh, uh, crystal classes and, 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 and at least some idea of what kind of space groups you can have. Okay. And uh, when we work out some examples, we will we'll, we'll look at some at least, at least for the simple, for the, for the crystal classes that do not have too many, uh, too many too many space groups. Okay, you can you can be expected to uh, to to at least know some of the different space groups. So, for example, like triclinic, monoclinic. Okay, I would expect you to know know some of the some of the uh, space groups. Okay. Additionally, we said that uh, we we said that there are some some very special things about the names. Like like uh, for example, in a cubic, you can have either p i or f okay and uh, similarly in a cubic the second second uh, number has to be a 3 or a 3 bar okay so these are some of the little things that will help you uh, to quickly identify uh, identify space groups okay so so uh, you know you know just by looking at the name of the space group you can you can usually tell at least at least you can tell broadly which crystal system it belongs to Beyond that, uh, in some cases you can tell the crystal class, okay, and uh, in some cases you can actually identify the detail of the space group, okay, just by inspecting the name. Uh, of course, I am not saying it is very easy, so uh, so we will look at some simple examples, and uh, at least at least uh, for for uh, simple cases, I would expect you to be able to work out these things. So, so I will conclude this lecture here. In the next lecture, we will review what we learnt in week 6 and do practice problems. Thank you.